Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I apologize for that week break I took. Uh, I just really needed it, but we are back and today we'll be continuing into part seven of what if Beerus arrived after GT. If you haven't seen part six, there's a title card. We can go check it out and see what happened in the last part. But we'll be going into the Goku versus Goku Black arc. How strong is the Super Saiyan 5 form that Goku has? Finally, we'll be able to see what Goku is truly capable of with all the training he has been doing. If you're interested, I own a Discord server for anyone who wants to join and talk more about Dragon Ball with me and other viewers. Maybe give us some of your own what if ideas and maybe in the future, I could do them. Check in the link in the description down below. Without further ado, let's dive into part seven of what if Beerus arrived after GT. Where we last left off, we have just witnessed Goku transform into his strongest form, Super Saiyan 5. The power that Goku Black felt from Goku was immense. He didn't know what to say. so. He asked where he brought them to. Goku explained that they are in a place, out of the universe, and the only place he could use his full power without putting anyone at risk. Goku Black would try to attack Goku, but his strikes did not phase Goku whatsoever. He would flick Black and this would send him flying, as then he would catch him saying he had his body stolen before, but the person who stole his body couldn't use the same amount of power that he could, and he sees that it is the same for Goku Black. Goku Black makes distance between the two, as he grows angry. Having his own speech about the gods and the mortals, and how mortals should not share any place with the gods, and will go on about his zero mortal plan. Goku Black tries to attack Goku, but it is no use as he cannot hit Goku. Goku prepares to end the fight rather quickly, until Goku Black loses control again, and Goku will see that he does not have full control of his body, and sees that another version of himself is trying to break free. Goku Black gains control, going back to fight Goku. But this time, Goku holds back, not wanting to hurt himself, so he dodges most of Goku Black's attack. and tries to talk to Goku Black out and to let his body go, but Goku Black refuses. With Goku holding back against Black, and with his anger, it pushes Goku Black, thinking to himself that since he stole Goku's body, that he too could obtain the transformation that he has. <laughs> His body bulks up, hair begins to grow as more rosé colored hair grows all over his body. Goku looks away as he when he sees Goku Black again, his eyes widen in shock to see Black in what it looks like to be Super Saiyan 5, but with a rosé color rather than his silver hair. And Goku Black laughs maniacally with this new power and now gets cocky thinking he has far surpassed Goku as their fight continues and this time their fight completely switched with Goku Black pushing Goku back this time. Goku is shocked that he is able to use his own power even without all the training that he has done. The fight is intense with each clash between the two creating huge pressure waves even though they are in a voidless space. A way both Zeno and Grand Peace could feel the battle as they are the only ones powerful enough to sense the battle that is going on. And obviously Zeno finds this very entertaining and is very pleased with how strong Goku is and likes him seeing him at his full power. The Grand Priest then thinks that Goku will need to push himself further to be able to win against his opponent, but he does say that he senses more of Goku in the enemy's body than the person who has control over his body. We pan back to the fight, as Goku is having to fight back more and more, but he feels that the more he damages Goku Black, the stronger he gets. He then thinks about the training he has been up to, with the Grand Priest. He spent some months with the Grand Priest trying to learn a technique called Ultra Instinct, with the Grand Priest being the best teacher for Goku to learn Ultra Instinct, but he did have his struggles with the technique as he never tapped into the power on command, but rather when he was pushed to the edge. Goku tries to focus on how he felt trying to tap into Ultra Instinct. Meanwhile, Goku Black laughs maniacally as he kept trying to beat on Goku, thinking he has won and that no one could stop him until one of his punches get caught. As he looks as stunned as Goku's aura changes, his power explodes as an instant gets behind Goku Black and suddenly Goku Black is in major pain, as if he was punched so rapidly he didn't even notice. He powers up further, telling Goku that he will lose as he charges right at him, throwing a bunch of punches right at Goku, but Goku dodges all of them with ease. Goku Black is confused and doesn't get what is happening. He's confused on what the power that Goku is using. Goku explained about the training he has done with the Grand Priest, but Goku Black cuts him off, getting angry, saying mortals shouldn't be with gods. He begins to lose control as he starts attacking again, but much more uncontrolled with shooting key blasts everywhere. Goku dodges all the attacks and would cut off Goku Black's tail, making him lose his transformation. Going back to base, but Black isn't giving up, trying to attack Goku, but to no avail. One strong strike, took Black and he is out on the ground, holding his stomach in pain. Then suddenly, Goku Black's aura turns blue as a huge figure appears behind him. Similar to what Goku did when he faced Moreau with Ultra Instinct, Goku was shocked, not expecting this, but it was himself, although a different version of himself. He explained to himself that he could gain control of his body once again, but needs some help to remove the soul of Zamasu. Goku understood and did what he could, as together they would work out to get Goku's body back, so he would revert back to normal. It would be a bit awkward as they are both technically the same Goku, 
but once they got past that, they would head out to fix all the destruction that Zamasu caused. First with going back to Beerus and Whis, and the others are shocked to see two Gokus now as the Goku who was black explained to Beerus about the person who caused it all. Hearing about Zamasu, both Beerus and Whis would do some investigation on Zamasu, and when they would see him trying to attempt to assassinate Kowasu, they would step in, and Beerus would end up erasing Zamasu. Then with Goku and the other Goku, they would meet with Zeno and the Grand Priest to explain everything. The Grand Priest was surprised at first, but explained how he and Zeno felt the entire fight, as Zeno was super excited and was entertained by the fight between the two Gokus, as he will announce a tournament between all the universes soon. He also asked which Goku is stronger, as they both laughed thinking that the fight would probably be a draw since they are technically the same person, but this does make them question themselves to see who is a stronger version. But they cut ahead and asked the Grand Priest if the Super Dragon Balls has enough power to fix another timeline, and the Grand Priest said it could and asked that they would gather them to fix this version of Goku's timeline, and they would confirm his question. The Grand Priest would allow this, even though he would have liked to have both Gokus here, but he understands. Then. Both Gokus would need to collect the Super Dragon Balls in order to fix the timeline, which they would do and they would wish for that Goku's timeline to be fixed before anything that Zamasu would have caused. Now before, I know there's going to be some questions on, you know, why don't they don't fix Future Trunks' timeline, but this version of Goku, he's more, you know, friendly with Grand Priest and Zeno, and they would most likely be able to let him use the Super Dragon Balls compared to Future Trunks where he kind of broke a rule of time traveling and he's not in that level of friendliness with, with the Grand Priest and Zeno. So before y'all question, Future Trunks' timeline would not be able to be restored. But back to the story, before that Goku would leave, he would actually spar with himself, as they would both stay in their base form and just strictly stick with martial arts. The fight was weird as they both knew each other so well that they both fought in ways they don't normally do. And since they both thought the same way, their fight was really interesting, and Goku's most fun fight they have ever experienced. But it would turn out as a draw as even Goku can't be himself, as that Goku would return back to his time. Afterwards, Zeno would actually call Goku, and when he would meet with Zeno, he would tell him about the announcement of the Tournament of Power will be happening soon, and the rules of the tournament, and that he would not be able to participate since he would be leagues above everyone else, which Goku is bummed about, but is alright with it until he hears about the penalty for losing in the tournament. And Zeno tells Goku that if his universe is loses, the tournament he will not be erased with them. And when he hears that the universe is erased, if they lose, he gets worried. He thanks Zeno and will quickly leave, going back to Earth quickly while also picking up Pan and Oob from Mirus. He quickly gathers everyone to the lookout, being Vegeta, Gohan, Oob, Pan, Bra, Goten, both Trunks, and the Earthling fighters. He tells them all about the tournament and the rules. Hearing about being a race if they lose scares them, as they now know the stakes of losing that are definitely high. At first, Krillin says that they can't lose with Goku on their side, but Goku tells them that he cannot participate to the shock of them all. Vegeta jumps in saying that they are at a disadvantage since most of their team consists of kids with little to no experience, as he only counts himself, Gohan, and Future Trunks being the top three of the team. The humans take offense to Vegeta's words, but they do agree with him, as Krillin and Tien both agree that they would both be holding the team back, especially with their age catching up to them. But they do state that Marin is stronger than both of them, and maybe with some more training, she could be a lot more helpful. Goku does say that he has two fighters that could be a big help, but realize the team would have 11 members, and wouldn't want to kick anyone out. He does ask Vegeta if maybe Pan and Bra could use the Patara earrings to fuse together to be one fighter, as they would be much more powerful like that. Vegeta asks why the Patara earrings, but Goku states that the tournament is timed. If they use too much power before winning, they could be disqualified if they use the fusion dance, and with the Patara fusions, it would last longer than the tournament. Pan and Bra are kind of questionable, since they want to see what they themselves are capable of, but with the world at stake, they will put it aside. With the extra slot available, they would ask who would be the other two fighters. First, Goku tells Vegeta about the other full saying he knows about in this universe, as he senses big potential in him being a good helper. The other suggestion shocks them, especially Oob, as he says the other person would be Granola. Oob is against it, saying that he is a hitman in this universe, as Goku gets it, but he did spend some time observing him, and knows he isn't fully a bad person, just misguided, and should be given a chance. He continues with that they need the best chance of winning on their own, as he will have no strings to pull if they lose. Oob would suck it up for now and agree with Goku, as they do need to win so their universe isn't erased. Goku would quickly teleport throughout the universe to pick up the two fighters, and once they return back to Earth, both Broly and Granola are confused with seeing Goku, saying he has a huge favor to act. And that's where we're going to leave it off for now. Tell me what you think about this 7th part and how I did with the Goku vs Goku Black arc. What do you think about Goku revealing his true power? Will his aid in training the team for the tournament of power be enough to let them win without him? What do y'all think about the team formation? What could have happened differently? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I would love to hear them. If y'all are interested and enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. Hit notification bell to be alerted whenever I post another part. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next part. See ya.